All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to another uh, departmental deep dive. Tonight, we'll be concentrating on our international business program. I hope everyone is staying warm. I know uh, most parts of Pennsylvania and New Jersey and New York have been hit with the snowstorm. Um, so again, I hope everyone's staying nice and warm and dry. Really, it's a great time to tune into a nice Facebook Live event. So we appreciate everyone spending time with us tonight. Uh, this event will be recorded. It should be uh, roughly 30 to 40 minutes in, in duration. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to type them into the Facebook chat and we'll be sure to pose them to the panelists. Um, we're gonna start off with a quick presentation. Um, then we're gonna open it up to some of our student panelists um, just to kind of give you an idea of how the, the event will run. But before we go any further, uh, we just you know would like to meet the group here and we can start with Dr. Wen, go ahead. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Lam Nguyen. I'm currently a tenure full professor and chair of the Department of Management International Business. I'm also the co-director for the Global Business Institute where I uh, spearheading the International Business Initiative, including the launch of our International Business Major, which we're gonna talk about today. And also one of the most well-dressed people on campus, I will say, you're, you're looking pretty dapper tonight. Sorry if I'm overdressed. <laughs> Sure. Uh, Carolyn. Hi, I'm Carolyn Benner. I am a senior at Bloomsburg University. I am an international um, business major with a specialization in marketing. I also have a French minor um, on campus. I am the president of the Global Business Association and I'm a part of the dance team and the dance ensemble. It might've been easier for me to ask you, but aren't you involved in at this point? You're a pretty <laughs> busy person, really making the most of your time. Good for you, good for you. Miranda. Hi, I'm Miranda. I am a sophomore international business major. I'm hoping to begin a specialization in supply chain management. I am also in the Global Business Association and I am serving as the treasurer this year. All right, great, thanks Miranda. And Lily. Hi, I'm Lily. I'm a recent graduate from Bloomsburg University. I graduated in 2019. I was an international business major specializing in finance. And currently I am working for a company called Signet Health as a project specialist. Awesome, now uh, where, where are you living right now, Lily, if you don't mind me asking? I am outside Philadelphia, Abington okay. to be exact. Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. So now that, that's one of the um, primary misconceptions about international business is that you have to live internationally. And I know that's something Dr. Wen is going to talk about tonight where you don't necessarily have to live abroad in order to work in international business, but I don't wanna step on uh, what, what Dr. Wen has planned. And uh, James. Oh yeah, I'm uh, James Black. I'm the assistant to uh, the Dean of the Ziegler College of Business. His name's Dr. Uh, Todd Chauver. Um, and I'm here to be supportive of the event and the students. Sure, great. And James would be able to give a nice broad perspective too about all the college of business. All of our academic programs are pretty well integrated within the Ziegler College of Business. So that's what, you know, James would be able to give you a nice wide uh, angle lens view of, of the Ziegler College of Business. So great. So before we go any further though, I know Dr. Wen has a great presentation teed up um, here. Let me go ahead and share my screen so we can jump into that. All right, go ahead, Dr. Wen. All right, uh, so for the next 10 to 15 minutes, I would like to introduce a little bit about the international business major that we have under the department here. Go ahead. So the international business, the BSBA uh, degree program that housed in the Department of Management and International Business. Uh, you know, the Ziegler College of Business, we strategically, culturally, and structurally designed this program right, so that we can meet our, the needs of our students and our constituencies in the passive system. We actually, this is one of the best international business program uh, in the entire uh, system here, because we want to meet that, you know, increasing needs of our students. So uh, the, uh, the, uh, the majors program uh, will provide you with, you know, a, a, a international business core, uh, you know, from various, you know, aspects of business, such as marketing, uh, you know, management, of course, you talked about finance as well. And we also offer what I think is very unique is the, what we call specialization, which is like functional area in the business, because that's what help our students to land a job, increase their job marketability, you know, uh, you know, when they graduate, which I will talk a little bit more about this. But in addition to that, this international business program, we also collaborate 
not only you know with other majors in the college inside the college, we also collaborate with the College of Liberal Arts. Uh, so we have two different, you know, uh, specialization, the economics and the global, uh, uh, global globalization and policy as well. Can you move a little? Next. So uh, what a reason why uh, we came up with this degree program is because of the, like I said, increase in need. Uh, we conducted research and here I could share with you uh, some of the, you know, research that we found through uh, Inside Higher Education about only 15% of employers, you know, people are gonna hire our students, right? Our graduate, only 15% believe that our graduates is, uh, you know, ready to work and to be able to be aware and, and you know, have experience with different culture outside of the US, which is to me, that is alarming, right? Because this day and age, uh, you know, we talk about global business environment, everything is global, right? And only 15% believe that our students are ready you know, to experience with the culture outside of the U.S. And only 18% believe that our students can work with people from different backgrounds, which leave us like 82% that don't think our students are ready. And that's why we developed the program to help close this gap, right? We want to provide our students with, you know, that skills, that skill set and that global mindset that help our students, you know, to be ready, you know, to apply and then to be successful in the workforce right after they graduate. Dr. Wen, is, is it required to, ha to be able to speak another language or a second language in order to be in, in the international business program? Very good question. Our IB program, we only require for second language, just like any other majors in the college of business. Uh, we don't require a very extensive, you know, uh, you know, the second language in the program. Okay, great. Thank you. you go ahead. Yeah. All right, so here's our missions and goal, right? So our mission, we prepare our students to assume a leadership position uh, in a diverse environment and in companies that conduct business around the world. And be because of that, and our goal, like I said earlier, we develop students with a global mindset, right? A global competencies and an appreciation of cultural and global differences. Now, you student can study knowledge in the classroom, but the important thing is, we need to hone their skill. We need to sharpen their skill, develop them so that they are ready, right? To work in this such a diverse environment because nowadays involved in business, you either work for a company that work overseas or a company that competes again, a foreign company, right? Either way, you need this kind of skill set and knowledge and competencies so you can be successful in your career. And like you said earlier, I, I'm very glad that you, you, you mentioned that. Uh, there's a misunderstanding uh, about, oh, this international business degree only for people who, you know, willing to work overseas. As a matter of fact, we have graduate students with this degree program that they get apply for a job and they get job right here in Pennsylvania, like Lily, for example, right? So you don't have to travel overseas to have the degree program. But like I said, the degree program give you that global mindset that help you function very well in the uh, global economy. Now, of course, you will have a higher chance, you know, to be sent off to other country if you work for a, a multinational corporation. So that means your career development is there, you know, the path for your career is, is there. So, but don't limit yourself. Just like, oh, I only can work in an international environment. You can work right here in Pennsylvania and involve significantly in the global environment with this degree. And by the way, this degree, after you graduate, you can land job in many different aspects of business, such as finance, marketing, human resource management, you know, ITM, supply chain, many, right? So don't limit yourself. Just thinking that it's degree only for whoever want to travel abroad for work. Please continue. All right, I want, would like to share with you uh, about the increasing needs for the international business degree. As you see here, right, I use the unit called uh, majority of own U.S. affiliates of M&E, which is multinational enterprises. Mm -hmm. And you see this group of companies employ 7.8 million workers in the U.S. in 2018, an increase from last year. And if you look at the charts right down at the uh, corner right here, you see the trend is increasing. That means the number of jobs, right, for the international business degree will be increasing in the future. 
And that's a very good news for our students who are gonna go into this degree program. So the, MNT, uh, the MNEs also accounted for 6% of the total private industry employment. That huge, right? In the next couple of slides, I'm gonna go into deeper details about you know, the numbers and things like that. But imagine that the number of jobs they offer and the current dollar value added to the US GDP increased 8.4% to 1.1 trillion. And there's a little you know, US map there. And you see where they have some orange and a little lighter yellow, right? What does that tell you? That tell you that's where the job for the international business uh, uh, offered by these uh, companies concentrated, right? And you see Pennsylvania right there in the lighter yellow, I would say from five to 7% employment. This is huge. So you see all over the place in the US, right? You can see according to the map here, you can find potential job for the international business degree. Can you go ahead? So in, in, in summary, for, for students and for parents, um, we need more of these people, right? So the more we can have, the better. Yeah. So it, the, your likelihood of getting a job is pretty high. Yep. And, and then, like I said, it's in functional business area. That's what right. our degree is unique. It is very innovative. We have the majors in the national business, but we have the specialization like in one of the specific area that helps the student land the job at first. Like I said, HR, marketing, uh, you know, finance, like Lily, right? And economics, you name it, right? So functional areas would help the student land the first job, but the global mindset, the global competencies and the cultural awareness will help our students advance in the career in this global environment. So not even yeah. building you for the first job, for, for an entry level job, more or less almost building you for a management level position, right? Yeah. Instead of playing checkers, we're playing chess here, right? We're trying to think two or three steps ahead. Perfect. That's how you, you put it perfectly, right? Uh, and also, you know, managers or people, people in business nowadays to be able to function well in this environment, to be able to win, right? To be successful. Mm -hmm. They need this knowledge. They need these skill sets, not only at the manager, but also at the employee's level. I can guarantee you that every single student now apply for a job. They're going to have some kind of questions asking about experience with different culture, different you know, backgrounds of people they may see. So again, mm -hmm. this degree to prepare them for that. Yep. And mm -hmm. here on this slide right here, again, I'm not going to be able to go into detail, but to show you the employment, right, by these and MNE. Uh, you know, this is all state you can see, right? You can see the number here. I can see that in manufacturing, in mm -hmm. wholesale, you can see vast majorities of different industry. You can see there's a job for uh, the international business degree there, right? Manufacturing, wholesale, retail, you can name it. And also here, um, you know, professional scientific, right? Keep going, please. So even under the other industry, you can see a breakdown into further number here. Can you go ahead? And by the way, these units are in thousand, okay? All right, you can see here, right? Employment by all the states in other industry. And, and you can and see from there, right? You, you can talk about here, accommodations and food, you know, services and things like that. You know, 600 over 600,000 jobs. And here I break it down to regions, right? So we see uh, Mid East regions, you know, New England regions, Great Lakes, you know, you can see all the regions in the United States. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more specifically in the Mid East regions where it includes Pennsylvania. So in other words, our students literally after graduating with this IB degree, they can apply job for everywhere in the country. Now, where they have a higher need, as you can see here, right, is Southeast, right, and then Mid East, which is right here, uh, and then Far West and things like that. Please. So now we're going to go into the uh, Mid East region. All right, so see the Mid East region here, you can, can break down, right? You can see here uh, the highest one, of course, New York, <laughs> our nearby right here, right? Uh, very popular. And then right next to it is Pennsylvania. Yeah, you see the second column, to, uh, you know, from the right here, right? It's Pennsylvania with 320,000 jobs in 2018 offer, right? And then you see New Jersey is our neighbor state. So during this tri-state, you can see that majority of the jobs mm -hmm. for the Mid East region is right here, right in our backyard, mm -hmm. right? Keep going, please. It's not necessarily like we're preparing people to be 
Uh, although you could go in this direction, but we're not preparing people to be diplomats where you're living overseas 12 months out of the year and you know, you're a plane flight away from home. That, that's, that's just not the case. It's, it, might, it seems like it might be that way. It's definitely not. The, the beauties of this degree program is, well, we can also prepare our student if they want to work for a non-governmental like UNs and things mm -hmm. like that, right? So there's also, if they go with the policies and globalization track or economics, right? A lot of times these are the degree that help them, you know, land a job as an economic specialist or analyst, you know, in this, you know, non-government or non-profit organization. So the, what I'm trying to tell you is with this degree, it's opened a lot more doors for our students in terms of job when they graduate. And where it might take them depends on how well they prepare in terms of their skill set, in terms of their global mindset that we talked earlier. All right, so now I, I broke it down even deeper into Pennsylvania, right? You can see here manufacturing, of course, need a lot more, you know, in that area. But you can see also here, you know, retail trade, right? You see about, you know, 57.8, you know, thousand, 50,000 uh, jobs they offer. So even within the state of Pennsylvania, right here, you can see there's potential for jobs for these IB programs. And Dr. Went, when, when we talk about international jobs in retail or international jobs in manufacturing or wholesale trade, can you give us some example job titles or what might people be doing if they were working, if one of their jobs fell in one of the, the internet or the, uh, the manufacturing column, what might they be doing? Like what capacity would their job include? Well, it could be many. Just like, for example, you can have a job in the purchase department like us in the supply chain, or you can have a mm -hmm. job in finance called financial uh, analyst or you can have a job as an HR specialist. Do you see that? It mm -hmm. still works as an, any other business major program, uh, you know, degree program that they can get a job for. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Like it doesn't have to be something like, oh, you have to work in the international department or you, you don't have to do that, right? You know, but, it's, it's, it, it seems like it's preparing people to work for companies, which seems to be almost all of them, um, that have an international presence or they work with organizations overseas um, where it's almost preparing them to do, have a specialized area of, of knowledge, right? So they're a subject matter expert, but also have the skill set needed to be able to work with coworkers or other organizations where you're gonna be interfacing overseas. Well, to put it this way, nowadays in this global economy, most companies are either international companies or compete with other international companies, right? right. So like I said, if you are a US company, well, you might have to compete with foreign company or you might have clients who come from another country or from another background. It doesn't have to be, you know, in one country, uh, you know, from yeah. another country. So the idea here is that we, we help our students to increase their ability to function in that diverse mm -hmm. environment, how to manage a multinational team, you know, how to communicate with people from different culture. And mm -hmm. I have an example here with uh, Seki Sui. It's right down the street here in Bloomsburg, right? Well, but they have clients coming from Japan. And one of my students actually interned there, right? So before they came, well, she learned in the classroom, she needed to do some research about it. She actually did, she did some research about the, cult uh, the, uh, the cultures of Japan and, you know, what people expecting and all kinds of stuff. Well, then when the de delegates came in town here, well, she know how to, you know, welcome them, how to address them, you know, how to build that relationship. And that's all mm -hmm. the degree is about, you know. So having that kind of appreciation for cultural differences and, right. and the global competence so that they can right. function very well. Yep. All right. So that's just some stuff. I have more, but because of time limits, you know, if you want to know more, uh, just let me know. I'll be happy to share with you, you know, all of the data. And, and so the question is, why? Why the degree here at Bloomsburg, right? So first of all, like I said earlier, we have a strong international business core. Our course includes, uh, you know, 21 credits, uh, which focus on global business, managing multinational organizations, international mm -hmm. finance, international marketing, international management, and specifically, we dedicated six credits mm -hmm. uh, for an international starting abroad trip, uh, we call faculty left, uh, that happened in the senior years, right? It's a two weeks uh, long program uh, that the student will go to a foreign country uh, with the professor and then learn about cultural differences, learn about business, you know, et cetera. And when they come back, they want to take, you know, six credits, uh, you know, courses here, two courses, uh, so that they complete the, the course. And then we also have a strong cross-college collaboration 
probably the Ivy program at BU is among the very rare programs that we have this cross college collaborations. Like I said, we uh, have two specialization, one in economics, the other one is in policies and globalization in the uh, College of Liberal Arts, which increase, again, like I said, increase our student chance, you know, to apply to get a job after they graduate. Mm -hmm. One unique thing, and I think this is the thing that stands out for our IB program at BU, is that we are a full member in the Consortium for Undergraduate International Business Education, or QUIBI. This is like a benchmark organization where uh, full memberships are top IB program in the country, such as University of South Carolina, Northeastern University, Washington University, et cetera. You know, so we in that league, we in that group with this excellent, excellent IB <laughs> program. We benchmark against them. And I remember when I presented our IB curriculum to them, and I got a well round applause from them because they, they really appreciate the way that we uh, being very mm -hmm. innovative with our IB program. Having, being a member of this uh, QB, just put a stamp on our quality that we are recognized as among, you know, very top program uh, in the IB area. Don't take our word for it, right? The, the, an organization where this is what they do, they're telling you it's good, right? You don't have to take our word for it. You know, they that actually, kind of thing speaks for itself. To be able to be a full member, they actually send their people to come to our campus and check on our program, check mm -hmm. on our you know uh, initiatives and other things as well. Not just the IB program. We have to have supportive you know culture, supportive structure, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you know to, to be able to to make the program a big success. And that's why we, like I said from the beginning, the ZCOP is structurally, strategically, and culturally designed to you know support this program. Yeah. All right. So we also launched, uh, we also founded a new global student uh, uh, association. We call Global Business Association, where Carolyn and uh, you know is the president right now. And again, our, the purpose of the club is to help to give our students an opportunity, you know, to practice what they learn from a classroom, right, and to appreciate culture and to raise the awareness of cultural differences. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a lot of activities, which I will talk in the next couple of slides here. Mm -hmm. One other unique things about our IB program that we have a very strong faculty champions. We have not only our foreign born faculty, but even our US born faculty. They all support, they, they're the champion for the international business. And our, our department is one of the diverse, uh, you know, departments in the college of business. All right. And we are trained, we have terminal degrees in the international business arenas. So that would help, you know, build our curriculum stronger and more rigorous. And the last point here, which I mentioned, this is probably the third time, the functional specialization that we have, currently we have seven and we are about to add uh, two more, right? One more, uh, is to improve the job marketability for our students. And that's what we here care about. We, our, our, our mojo here is student success. We want to provide our students the best they can so that when they graduate, you know, they have job ready for them there to be successful. Please continue. All right, I'm gonna quickly go over the uh, uh, curriculum here since you know, we we're out of time a little bit. So you see our degree is again, 120 credits above, uh, one above level and up to 60 uh, credits will be for our uh, qualitative liberal arts foundations. Uh, just like any other uh, degree program in the College of Business. We also have 24 credits in the business core that all business students will have to take. The international business major, management, finance, uh, et cetera. You know, all business students would have to take this. Then we have the international business core, the 21 credits, which I talked earlier. That includes a required uh, faculty less short-term uh, studying abroad trip. Then we have 15 credits for the uh, specialization. And can you go to the next slide? There you go. Right now, we currently we have seven different specializations that our students can choose when they declare the international business major. All right, you can have one of these built in with the, the major. So you got one degree with you know, a major and that specialization built in and an international experience. That's what make a difference. 
All right, please. Well, the next couple of slides here, just to show you that the type of activities that our uh, Global Business Association, the student club, actually we did this to increase our student uh, you know, knowledge and skill in terms of you know, uh, international business. So we did event like the cultural etiquette, you know, dinners. We also did field trips, you know, we took students to um, company that engage in international business and right now backyard. Crayola here, you know, Hershey, we took them down there too. We also went to Eurofins in Lancaster, uh, the companies that manufacturing, you know, lab equipment to test, you know, medical devices. Uh, we also have the executive, you know, uh, panelists that we invite uh, you know, CEOs or, you know, executive team to come in and share with our students about all of the challenges uh, in the, you know, in the global environment. And, um, and here is um, some picture of my student actually, uh, I took them to, uh, this is one from Northeastern University in Boston, where we competed in a case competition among the Quibi uh, University. Next, please. All right, this is one of very specific case competition that I'm very proud of, where in the first time that BU student placed third in this highly, highly ranked uh, case competition among top university in international business. We actually placed, uh, you know, above like James Madison University, you know, George Washington University. So that's make me so proud because I believe that BU student, right, if they are you know, if they pay attention, if, you know, uh, we pay attention to, you know, to, 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 to teach the class and interact with them, they can do as, as good as other, you know, big name school, right? So for a fraction of the price. With that? For a fraction of the price. Exactly. That is no doubt. You compare George Washington University, like 40, 50,000, you know, US dollar a year. Mm -hmm. And here with our affordable tuition at BU. Think about that, right? So like I said, Austin are smart, working very hard. And like I said, it, you know, with the, you know, the dedication of our faculty and staff here, I think our students would have the best education, to be honest with you. And here, just the list of the, some of the members in the Quibi that I said earlier, and you can see the list, right? Uh, in the state of Pennsylvania, we only have Temple and Villanova. None of the passing school actually is in this group. Uh, of uh, you know top IB programs here, so that's make us very proud to be a part of this. All right, so the next couple of slides here, I'm trying to wrap up here, is more specific information about the faculty-led study abroad. So as a matter of fact, last summer 2019, I took our 11 IB students. We went to uh, Hanoi, Vietnam. It's the first time, it's first trip in the IB program. So our student had a great time experiencing global business, many aspects of, you know, the global, uh, we, talk, we actually went to, we can move down to the next couple of slides when I talk. Um, yeah, here, so you see, we met with exactly from, you know, a global company that they actually manufacture gaps and old Navy pants and jackets. And by the way, they're gonna export these items back to the US market. And one of our students, uh, I mean, coincidentally, she worked at a, a retail store for Gavin Old Navy. So she told us, wow, it's like a dream come true, like coming full circle. So now she experienced, you know, the stuff that she saw in her store that is made from another country. And as a matter of fact, if you go today, you go to the store, to, right, to buy clothing, uh, check the, the tag out because many of them will be uh, made uh, or made in, uh, in Vietnam because of these global supply chains and you know, the outsourcing that happens in our country. Uh, we also took the student to uh, visit a industrial zone where the student met with the director uh, talking about why this you know, industrial zone attracted you know, foreign company to produce, manufacture stuff there and then export back to other country in the world. So we also went to visit our partner in lo local partner in Vietnam. This is the foreign uh, trade university uh, in Vietnam that we actually VU has a relationship with. Uh, so we had interact with them and we have panel discussion on the Vietnam US international relationship and trade relationship. We also went to uh, visit a high school uh, where we talk with students about college in America. And also we talk about, you know, like try to 
talk to them about, you know, if they come to the U.S. and experience the U.S., you know, uh, higher education system, how good would that be? So our students, not only they go there for their class or their grade, but they're actually also our ambassador. You know, they talk with, you know, high school students about BU, mm -hmm. about all of the good things that we offer uh, at BU here. Uh, in addition, we also uh, had some sightseeing. We actually went to visit some historical places. On the left, you can see here, it's actually, it's called Harlow Prisons in Hanoi, uh, where the late U.S. Senator John McCain uh, had been uh, kept prisoner there for five and a half years during the Vietnam War. On the right here, you see Hotel Metropole uh, Hanoi. That is where President Trump had the uh, second uh, summit with the North Korean leader uh, in Hanoi. Uh, that year, earlier that year, please. And of course, other sightseeing for culture. We learn about different cultures and like how, you know, Vietnamese people live their life and, you know, the food they eat in many, many aspects of culture that we, uh, you know, actually explore, our students explore it. And we have cultural exchange with the students from the local students from that university. All right, the last slide here, actually we try to feature some of our, uh, you know, recent graduates. Uh, many of them really wanted to, to, to join our discussion today, uh, but unfortunately because of time differences, you know, some students even from European country, they can't join it. Uh, but uh, we have uh, Lily, you know, which is our recent grad uh, that he is today. So I would love to, you know, you guys can hear directly from our student and recent grads about the program. But again, um, uh, thank you for, for this excellent you know, uh, session here that uh, gave me a chance to talk more about the international business program. The program is new, but we already grow very fast. We have more than 100 students already in the program and it's continued to grow. So please check our department website out or uh, contact me. Uh, I'll be happy to answer your questions and welcome you, uh, you know, to our major. Thank you. So I was uh, plugging in my, my computer and, and, and thank you, Dr. Wen. Um, yeah, I think one of the uh, more important things to keep in mind is our, a lot of our recent alums, they're busy. They're busy working, right? They're busy, busy being employed and that is important. Um, so we're, we're gonna pivot right now to a, a Q and A panel here with, uh, with Dr. Wen and, and some of our students. So I have some seated questions. If anyone in the audience has has a specific question, we'd love to hear it. Just type it in the Facebook chat and we'll make sure we post it to the group. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and, and kick it off with the very first question. OK, something nice and light and fun. Your favorite class to either take or your favorite class to teach. And we'll start with Carolyn. So my favorite class that I have taken was um, business communications. I just took it this past semester, um, and I'm pretty sure that all of the business majors have to take it. We do a project in this class that is specific towards the career path you want to go into. So basically, you have to reach out to professionals in the field that you would like to go into. Um, you have to interview them. You have to do a formal interview, and then you have to write a reflection paper on how you can break into that type of career path. Um, and then through the interview, it's like it, you ask them advice of how to get in. Um, what their day-to-day -day looks like, all of these information. And then you just create a paper and a presentation and it really helped to um, you know, break into the industries. Uh, me specifically, I would like to go into the sports industry and that is definitely, um, it's super helpful to network and to market yourself. And I've learned a ton from these um, firsthand inter interviews. I interviewed three people, um, two from the Philadelphia Phillies and one from the Boston Red Sox. and. It's just super interesting to learn firsthand of how to get into these um, these different uh, career paths. So that was my favorite class that I've taken. Nice. Okay. So you want to work in the sports industry. What's your specialization, Carolyn? Marketing. Marketing. Okay. All right. So as sports are, as American sports are kind of making their way overseas, you want to be the person who's kind of the, 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 the pitch person um, marketing the, the, the teams then, right? Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of um, sports here, that we have in America, I mean, they all have, they have teams in Canada, they right. get their players from overseas. So even yep. just right here for like the Phillies, for example, there's so many mm -hmm. ways to use uh, international business in there. That's a great example too. I mean, cause you, you know, you often think about, you know, uh, different types of, of, of organizations, but even just sports, right? You think about the NBA, you're thinking about the MLB or the NHL, right? You think about all these organizations, 
all of them have a global presence and these sports are being played across the world. Right. So, you know, that, that, that that's an important part of that country's culture. That that's a great example. It's something I never even thought of. Great. Thanks. Karen. And I like the Phillies part. I'm a little less interested in the Boston thing, but you know, we're, <laughs> this is a pro Phillies uh, event here. Great. Oh, thanks. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Miranda. So far, my favorite class that I've taken, I would say has been microeconomics. In my class, we talked a lot about real life examples of how consumer attitudes and such can influence the market as a whole and price points. And that was really interesting to me. So, okay. And Miranda, what's your specialization? I'm hoping to begin one of our new specializations, which would be okay. supply chain management. Nice. Okay. All right. Great. Great. Thank you. Lily. Well, can I, can I add a little bit to that? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, please that do. Supply chain management currently is not in the book yet. But we plan for uh, in the spring of 21, we're going to, you know, moving forward to, with that, uh, you know, paperwork for that uh, minor. Because it makes sense, you know, because nowadays the, the supply chain, you can tell, right, it's completely global. The, ex uh, the example I shared with you earlier, when a company oversee that, you know, make the clothes is then they export back to the U.S. You can tell, like big corporation, they outsource everything. They're sourcing things, you know, from out of country in the world, mm -hmm. even the Boeing company. All the parts and the aircrafts come from many different countries in the world. Right. So yeah, that that uh, my specialization, you know, will work towards that. And again, that that's a great example. You think of a boat, like of an airplane. That's just one example, right? So you figure they're getting in parts for for that airplane from hundreds of different places. Well, who's coordinating all that? Right. It's not one person. It's not a, a software platform that's doing it. Those are those are people who have, who have degrees in international business and supply chain management. Right. Perfect example. Uh, Lily. So I think my favorite class was international management. And I really like that class okay. because it just it taught you how to work with an international team. And mm -hmm. my goal was to start working in a you know global company. So I was expecting to work with international teams. So I thought it was just like real life skills that I was going to need in the future. That's why I really like that class. Great. And uh, Lily, what was your specialization when you were a student? Finance. Finance. Okay, great, great. Thank you. And Dr. Wen, what's your favorite class to uh, teach? Well, um, I teach a, a couple of classes here. I teach uh, ethics in the management, of course. I teach global business, and I teach the. Uh, uh, actually, I my fun part about the uh, the international business major is when I took the student to the to to Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So that's when I can kind of synthesize the knowledge they learn from many different you know classes in the in the core put it together, right? And then show them, you know, here's how it works in reality. You know, uh, we talk about cultural differences, right? In international management, uh, in global business, here, why different? It'd be the way people eat, the way people, uh, you know, uh, address each other, it's different, you know? And also business, what we talk about in supply chain, well, I show them here is how it works. It starts from here and there and, you know, all of that. Uh, so yeah, that, that experience, it's been my, my kind of like exciting. Because you know, I, you know, we teach I teach different classes, but when you you took the student uh, to real world and show them, here's what international business is all about, right? And show them in emerging economies where they can see a lot of implications uh, for a global business. That is the best moment uh, of teaching. Of course, you know, I like to teach in the global business, you know, classes and 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 cross cultural leadership as well, where yeah. we teach them, you know, how they can lead, you know, team in different uh, culture. Yeah, I mean, you're only going to learn so much from a textbook, you know, especially for a field like this. You know, it's your education can't just be rooted in the theoretical, right? You're going to have to get out in the field. You're going to have to spend some time practicing what you've learned in, in, in the classroom. And yeah, towards it's, it's, that point, I want to add a little bit here. Yeah. Our faculty, not only that they have a terminal degree, they are actually managers in the real world before. Many of them are professionals, you know, so, and they came from different countries. So when they teach in the program, not only that they teach them the knowledge from the textbook and some other materials, but they want to bring in their experience, you know, what they experience in the global environment. And that to me is invaluable for our students, right? Because the text is you can read, but the reality, the experience, you know, come from these professors, come from our faculty, come from different countries like this. To me, that is amazing. That is, that's helped our students learn a lot. Yes, completely agree. Completely agree. Good. Thank you. Um, so for, for the students in the group, why did you choose to major in international business? Like what was the, the, the genesis of your decision to go into international business? Carolyn. 
So I knew um, from when I was in high school that I wanted to do international business. I would say from maybe when I was in 10th grade, I was like, I want to study abroad to go to France. And so I looked at schools that only had like international business programs. And when I applied to Bloomsburg, the Mm -hmm. international business major wasn't official yet. So I started Bloomsburg as a management major. Mm -hmm. And then during the spring semester of my freshman year, I switched over to international business because once it was declared and I came to Bloomsburg because they had this really great um, program for studying abroad, which we can talk about later when we talk about studying abroad. And Mm -hmm. I was like, I want to do that one. That's the one I'm going to. Um, Didn't really apply to a lot of schools because I just knew that I wanted to do international business. Okay. All right. So what were some of your favorite classes in high school then? Like, how how did you, how did you know that that was the the field? Like, what was the light bulb moment? Um, So I knew that I wanted to do something with the French language and I didn't at the time want to be like a French teacher or something like that. So I figured that the the best way to do that was to go into business. And then all throughout high school, I took business classes. Um, I took a global business class in high school, which was um, great because it really opened you know, your mind to see like how things are doing um, in other countries. And uh, we did a project in there. It was about McDonald's and it was how like the McDonald's menu is different in every country. And I was like, wow, Mm -hmm. like I didn't even think of stuff like that, that they have to cater to like everybody's needs. And so once I like started seeing that, I took a couple other business classes, just like marketing classes. And um, I took a sports marketing class, which kind of helped me get into sports a little bit. Um, And I just, since high school, I knew from then that this is where I wanted to be. Awesome. That's a great story. Okay, great. Thanks, Carolyn. Uh, Miranda. I was initially drawn to the international business major. It stood out against the other business majors to me because of the program. And then I found that it's just the perfect major for me. I've loved it so far. Um, Mm -hmm. I love that it gives me the opportunity to study abroad Mm -hmm. uh, and just travel in general, as we will get into more. I have participated in the case competitions through Global Business Association before COVID hit, um, that means that Bloomsburg sent me to San Diego for a few days with my flights, hotels, and okay. meals paid for. All and right, I- nice, yeah. They didn't do that for me. <laughs> <laughs> Which I love to travel. It's something that I've definitely been wanting okay. to do with my life. And I was also attracted to the international business major because I knew I was interested in business, but I wasn't exactly sure what I couldn't pick on just one thing and so I like that the international business major gives me that flexibility because Mm. as Dr. Wynn said almost all business is international now Mm. so I feel like I could do pretty much any job with it and that functional specialization allows me to pursue something else in addition more as well as just the international business major being very similar to an international management program. Mm -hmm, So mm -hmm. you get to dive into other topics in a more deep dive than you may if you had a different business major. All right, great. Great story. Thank you, Miranda. Uh, Lily. Um, So I've always had a passion for traveling and I think that's what drew me into international business at first. Um, My family is from Poland and I'm bilingual. So I think that also drew me into the international world. Um, so I knew I wanted to work for a big, you know, global company. So I knew that international business was for me. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're, what's the other language you speak now? I'm assuming Polish. Polish. Yes. Polish. Okay. Nice. All right. So it it seems like, you know, just in in summary here, some of the common threads were interested in, in, um, in studying abroad, right. Interested in in traveling, um, having a keen interest in, in business to a certain degree, and also having an interest in, um, in a lot of different fields of, of, of business. You're not always going to know right away, oh, I want to go into accounting or I want to go into finance, right? You might have a more broad-based sense of interest um, and the international de- uh, business degree certainly allows you to both go broad and go specific at the same time, which is unique. You don't find that with a lot of degrees, period, whether they're business, college of liberal arts, college vet, whatever it is, um, that, that makes it pretty unique in that regard. Okay. And Dr. Wen, just if you don't mind me asking, why uh, why did you go into this field? What was what was the driving force for you? Well, since uh, the, when I first started, my uh, when I graduated from you know my undergrad, uh, you know I was into the workforce, and I actually did uh, sales <laughs> at the beginning. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, even I did have a sales degree, but mm-hmm. then I've involved more in the international business arena and an import mm-hmm. export company, and I do uh, okay. your agency. So yeah, I like the aspect of. Um, you know, trading, 
mm-hmm. you know, you have to negotiate deals and buying things from, you know, where they have a supply and selling where they have a high demand and, and make money. Don't get me wrong, it's business, right? So I, <laughs> international business, yeah. I import, export. I used to have my yeah. small business where e-commerce, when I actually uh, mm-hmm. imported stuff and selling local, uh, the local market, Mm-hmm. Or I could export my stuff to other countries as well. And then myself, I was an international student. Okay. I came to Vietnam, I came to the U.S. for my mm-hmm. degree, which mm-hmm. I'm very happy. I'm so glad I did that. That's a, one of the, the best decisions I made uh, mm-hmm. so far today, that I had the education from this great country and, and become who I am today. So that, that international business become the passion of me. And my, my master's degree is actually uh, emphasis in international business. Mm-hmm. And when I came to the uh, BU, one of the things that I actually saw that our student here, um, because of the small town kind of you know, setting, they did not have a lot of opportunity to experience the diversity. Right? Yeah. So we, I, I told myself that we got to do something to help our students you know, to catch up or, or to close that gap. Because guess what, students from other metropolitan area, like in New York, in California, Boston area, they already had an experience with diversity. Our students didn't have one. So this degree program would help our students, you know, get more kinds of that kinds of, okay, I have more skill now. I have more experience dealing with, you know, diversity. Uh, because at the end of the day, when they graduate and apply for job, guess what? They have to compete against the students from metropolitan mm-hmm. area. Right. So these degree program, hopefully we can help close that gap and help our students already, you know, for the global job, you know, anywhere in the world. And, and, and that's kind of the passion to do this kind of degree here. at right. the, And uh, we'll see in the future, already in three years in the program now, we see our students are, in, at least in the program, and most of our students uh, uh, get jobs after they mm-hmm. graduate. I'll have to do some more, you know, uh, research, you know, kind of see the number of but. Most right. of the students I know that I stay in touch with, they all have jobs, you know, somewhere else. Mm-hmm. So that's the good news. You know, we can see that our degree program deliver what we want for our students. Doctor, I can tell you were a salesperson at one point. Yeah, yeah, you definitely have some sales chops. I can tell you're 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 a good salesman for for the major. You're making me want to go back to school. So you're you're doing your job. Um, uh, it come from the it come from here. You know, if it come from your heart and your yeah. soul, it, mm-hmm. it, it works. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so my next question is, can, can the students talk about, and Dr. Ren too, talk about your experiences abroad in the international business program? And it could be study abroad. It could be um, when you go abroad uh, for, the, for the two weeks that Dr. Ren had mentioned. Can you just talk about your experiences abroad? Carolyn. Yeah, so I um, studied abroad twice so far. Um, so I went on the faculty led trip um, with Dr. N and with Lily okay. to Vietnam um, in the summer of 2019. Uh, okay. That trip was phenomenal. I've been to mm-hmm. Europe before previously for vacation. So um, okay. I like, have been abroad before, but mm-hmm. I've never been to Asia. And mm-hmm. it, I think that when we first got there and that culture shock really opened my eyes and I was like, okay, the world is big. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of differences. There's a lot of people. And it kind of like made me realize that, okay, everything is interconnected. So like when we went to the company that manufactured for Gap and Old Navy and American Eagle, Mm -hmm. we got to see the khaki pants they were making. I can go into an an Old Navy right now and find a pair of khaki pants. And that could be the exact same pair that I saw in Vietnam. So the experience that we had there um, really just made me solidified what I wanted to do. And I'm like, yes, this is exactly where I need to be. Um, Along with all of the cultural aspects that we learned, that was awesome. I love learning about history. I love learning about mm-hmm. culture. That's also part of the reason why I went into international business. Yeah. I love learning about that. Mm-hmm. Um, then another time I went, I went for my entire junior year. So I went for the um, wow. 2020 school year. I went to okay. in France because um, I mentioned previously that I really wanted to go to France. Sure. Um, so I went to ICN Creative Business School in France for the entire year. I did come home um, about a month and a half early because of COVID, but I was okay. there for eight or nine months. Um, so while mm-hmm. I was there, I got to go to um, 10 different countries, um, really oh easy to travel. Gosh. And the best part about this program, it is a dual degree program. So I will mm-hmm. be getting my bachelor's from Bloomsburg and then a bachelor's from ICN. And I know um, something a lot wow. of people think about um, for studying abroad is that it's really expensive. Um, yes. That is not the case at all. I was mm-hmm. able to do um, both of these trips, I'm still graduating on time. Um, 
and and I took a whole year essentially off because sure, the yeah. classes there um and I'm still graduating in the four, year, four years I will be graduating in this spring so with the affordability when I went to um France last school year it ended up being less than I would have paid for Bloomsburg because I was paying Bloomsburg's tuition and so since I live in Pennsylvania I also have financial aid and all of that and then sure. there are a ton of scholarships for studying abroad so Dr. N really really helped me with that and I was able to get a lot of scholarships for that and then just the housing that I had there, like the regular housing costs that were out of pocket just mm -hmm. turned out to be less than they would have been um, housing in Bloomsburg just because of roommates and all of that. So sure, yeah. a whole year, a whole year abroad um, cost less. Now, obviously there were some other costs like traveling, but that's all at your own discretion. Like yeah. you don't have to do that. Even just being right. there abroad with the program that we did there, we did um, travel to a couple other cities around us. We were in the Eastern part of France, kind of by Germany. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we were able to see like that, um, the European, the capital for the European commission um, is in Strasbourg, France, which is about a two hour bus ride away from where we were. So mm -hmm. we were able to see some political stuff for the European union. Wow, nice. uh, and then I'm also about, it was about two and a half to three hours on the high speed train to Paris. So I also got to see Paris and there's a ton of business in Paris. Sure, yeah. uh, so it was, it was an amazing experience. I definitely recommend studying abroad, even if it's just the two week faculty trip, um, okay. it'll really change your perspective on everything. Sure. Uh, and then with that, um, it wasn't studying abroad, but I did do um, one of the case competitions. Like Miranda said, I went to mm -hmm. St. Louis. So it was the university of Missouri, oh, St. Louis wow. yeah. uh, spring of, 2019 mm -hmm. uh, so that was also really cool because like Miranda said the College of Business paid for it um, and it was awesome that was a great experience um, and even though it wasn't abroad the College of Business and the global if we did it through the Global Business Association mm -hmm. it just gives you um, that opportunity to go and to see other things no matter if it's a couple hours on a field trip away from Bloomsburg or if it's you know, across the country in San Diego, or if it's in um, St. Louis, Missouri, or the other one that, the, that we had in Boston, just across the country, you learn so much, you get to experience yeah, new things, yeah. new people, new cultures. So that's my study abroad experience. Favorite thing you ate overseas? Ooh, that's a loaded question. Um, favorite thing I ate, I would say in, okay, so in London, um, I went to the Camden markets, okay. um, or like, these giant outdoor markets. And I had pulled pork mac and cheese that I think changed my life. Um, yeah. living in France, That's pretty Americanized though, huh? Yeah, but it was so good. Living in France, obviously I had a ton of croissants, a ton of pain au chocolat, oh, okay. a ton of baked goods um, every day mm -hmm. yeah. I had them. And then um, I also really liked the food in Portugal. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, which I didn't really expect myself to. Um, yeah. I'm kind of, picky um I when I went to Vietnam I definitely struggled with the whole food aspect for a little bit yeah I'm not adventurous when it comes to eating um, but sure. I did try I did try things and I pleasantly surprised um but yeah I would say either okay. the pulled pork mac and cheese that changed my life yeah change your life okay all of the French food because yeah. just the French put a lot of love into it yeah, yeah, the French food always looks good. My one of my kids' favorite movies is Ratatouille, so yeah. I, that that's the closest yeah. involvement I have. The French food it always looks really good. Okay. Absolutely, in um in Disneyland Paris, there is a Ratatouille restaurant. So if you ever okay. want to take nice. food there, they can get food from Remy himself. Oh man, better not tell my kid. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great, thanks, Carolyn. Uh, Miranda. So since I'm a sophomore, I have not been on the trip to oh, right, yes. yet, but I still have gotten some international experience through my participation in Global Business Association. This semester, we actually hosted a Zoom that was a cross-cultural exchange with students mm -hmm. in Vietnam. So even though we weren't able to travel there, it was really cool to have a Zoom to talk with them about their student life, about particularly their yeah. life as business students, mm -hmm. and uh, the trends they see developing overseas in Vietnam. Sure. Um, also, as Carolyn was talking about, those case competitions that I've mm -hmm. participated in, mm -hmm. though we don't travel ab abroad, we the competitions are focused around an international company. So that has done a lot to broaden my awareness about global business. Um, last year, the company was a global company based in the US and the one that I participated in this year virtually, the company was actually based overseas. Oh, okay. So it was really interesting to research all the different markets and the changes 
that you see with overseas companies. Yeah, and I think one of the one of the more interesting parts about this is, you know, normally for a lot of degree programs is you have your classroom work and then you do like an internship or a capstone where you apply what you've learned, but you only have that one professional experience. With this degree program, your professional experience is built into the curriculum. So by the time you graduate, it's not just the one internship, right? You have the case competitions, you have these projects you're working on in class, right? You have your your abroad experiences. So that way, when you walk away, your resume is jam-packed with things that you can talk about at an interview. You mm -hmm. know, and I think that that's an awesome experience. Dr. I, Wayne, I, I would add a little bit. As long as yeah. the student come in and try to reach out and try to involve, mm -hmm. we have a lot of activities for them, like outside of classroom, you know, yeah. like the Global Business Association. There's so many things we do to help right. our students, you know, learn outside the classroom. So as long as they engage, they wanna, they wanna reach out and 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 want to learn, mm -hmm. I'll be here. We'll be here to help them. You know, our staff, our faculty, me yep. personally, I would help them to get the experience they need for their for their you know for their job later on. Yeah, that's great. And Marin, did you have something else to add then? I was just going to say that um, my participation in these cases really mm -hmm. helped me figure out my special specialization. Sure. I wasn't sure which one I wanted to choose for my specialization. Mm -hmm. I wasn't 100% set on any of them. Mm -hmm. But in one of the cases that we looked into, it was very heavily focused on supply chain management. And right. I figured out that that was something that I was really, really interested in. Mm -hmm. And so I went to Dr. N and I was like, Dr. N, like, hey, I'm really, really interested in this. And he was like, wow, yeah. Miranda, like, I just submitted the paperwork today to make it Perfect a success. Timing. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm very excited to start that. All right. So Miranda, where do you look forward to traveling the most at? I'm so excited for the Vietnam trip. Okay. I'm so excited to go on that. <laughs> All right. Nice. Nice. Okay. Very excited. I really like that we're able to do some business while we're there. I feel yeah. like some other study abroads, you go and you take classes, but I feel right. like this is really enriching that we get to do business while we're there. I know my, you guys are so interesting. You're doing business on the international level. I mean, you're like it, it, international people of, of, of mystery, you know? I mean, it's like when I think of the archetype of business, I think of people that are in this major doing business on an international level to any capacity, you know, it's, it's very, uh, honestly, I'm not joking. It seems very rock and rollish, you know, like it's very slick and cool and, and shiny. That's, that's awesome. Very cool. Thank you, Lily. Um, so I also studied abroad twice. I went on the Vietnam trip with Carolyn and Dr. N and that okay. was just an amazing trip. Yeah. I mean, Vietnam is just like a, it's a completely different world over there. Mm -hmm. So it was really interesting to see that and to experience that. And I also studied abroad um, in Poland and I was uh, nice. able to travel to all the surrounding countries in Europe yeah. and just seeing all that history and culture is amazing. Mm -hmm. That's great. What uh, favorite food? Um, I have to say pierogi, you know? <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. And we have a lot of those in Pennsylvania, but yeah, they, what, they originate from in Poland, right? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Nice. Nice. So, so you went back to Poland and again, you said your family is, is uh, originally from Poland. So yeah, were you close I to where your family grew up? There. So while I was yeah. there, I actually, you know, met up with my family. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. That's such a cool experience. Good for you. That's great. Uh, Dr. Wank, you talk a little bit about your travel experience in the international business program. Well, well, well for the program or for myself? I would say for the program, if you don't mind. I'd love to hear about some of the things you've been doing in Vietnam when you're taking students overseas or any kind of study abroad options that you've had. Yeah, actually, uh, the trip that I took the student is a full pack activity for that two <laughs> weeks. You know, we, every day we have something to do. And I mix up with, you know, visiting businesses, learn about the global business and also... <laughs> I seeing, learn about culture. I mean, the picture I didn't even show enough. We went to many different places to learn about the real history, you know, of the Vietnam and even the Vietnam War, you know, between you know, the U.S. and Vietnam back then yeah. and uh, culture. Uh, we actually went to a place where we listened to uh, folk songs. People actually mm -hmm. sing and, and dance in the, in the folk, you know, in, in a traditional way. Uh, so that was still an experience. The first time they put on the big hat. I'm not sure you guys remember that uh Lily and, and Carolyn you know so so that's to me it's important because mm -hmm. it increased the awareness and and the, at the end of the day we want the student to have that adaptation skill you know wherever mm -hmm. they go they need to be adaptive they need to learn be flexible mm -hmm. right because like they said it's totally different when you step outside this country it's totally different and and what 
what I'm so glad about the trip is some of our students who never travel outside the U.S. One of the yeah. students, particularly, she didn't, didn't step on the airplane. I believe that uh, we call it. She never stepped on the airplane. Mm -hmm. They were so nervous before they, 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 they left. You know, they were so nervous. Oh, my goodness. I never get out of this area, let alone, you know, yeah. the way. But then after they experience all of this, they say, well, I'm ready now. You can send me yeah. anywhere in the world. I'm, I'm ready to, 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 you know, take on and, you know, get ready to, to adapt and things like that. And many of them feel like they still keep friendship, you know, friends with the people who still in Vietnam. I think that's amazing. And that will help them later on. Who knows down the road when they graduate and, you know, cross the path, you know, they may meet each other again. Again, uh, this experience really help our students have a real yeah. picture, real world picture of what they learn from the classroom and experience from there. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to talk a lot because the students come back and, you know, they wrote the uh, reflections and everything else. And her percent is amazing. It's like they learn, you know, a lot out of that trip. So, and that's make, make us an educator here. I'm very, mm -hmm. very happy because what we want to provide our students, we deliver. And by the way, when you go on a trip like this, they're going to cost some extra uh, money, right? Mm -hmm. We have scholarship. We have grants money. And also our dean is very generous. You know, last year they gave he gave uh, you know the students some money uh, to go as well. So I think uh, you know it's well designed. Uh, you know we have local partner that help us with a lot of logistics and a lot of things as well. Yeah. And we go with an experienced uh, faculty. You know, so mm -hmm. you learn like almost the minute you step on the airplane, you start learning until you come back. So, Dr. Wen, when you were working in international sales, you said you're working in imports and exports. What are some of the places around the globe that you had traveled? Wow, uh, I travel a lot, but mostly in the uh, South Asian area. Okay. Um, I, amazing that I haven't been to a European country, which I really want mm -hmm. to. Uh, but most of the time I travel to like, you know, Thailand, of course, Vietnam and Singapore, Malaysia, China. I've been to China before mm -hmm. uh, as well. You know, Taiwan, uh, a lot of a lot of different places. Uh, mm -hmm. The country that I worked with before is actually Taiwan because when I imported the CDs from that country and sold it in our local market in Vietnam. So uh, for me, uh, I believe in traveling. The more I travel, the more I learn. Even at this age, you know, uh, I feel excited every time mm -hmm. I step on the airplane going somewhere because I know for sure I'm going to learn something. Yeah. Great. Even Thank the smaller you. thing I've learned, I love that I, that, that idea is about traveling. It's opened mm -hmm. my horizon. Yeah. Great. Thank you. All right. So my final question for the night, it's, it's, it's a two-parter here. So um, what is your dream job, okay, in this field? And if there's one place in the world you could travel, where would it be? Carolyn. Okay. So my dream job is to work for a professional sports team. Um, I don't care what sport. What team though? What team, Carolyn? This is important. Okay. Well, don't hate me on this one, but if I had to choose a team, I would probably choose the Toronto Maple Leafs. Wrong um, answer. Wrong I know, answer. I know. I get that a lot. I get that a lot. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, when I was in middle school and they were last in the season for like six years in a row, I was like, that's my team. I'm going to start liking them. And ever since then, I've been a Maple Leafs fan. So, um, but with that, with that, I definitely could use my international business skill because that, well, first of all, they are on Canada. Second of right. all, um, with the whole French thing, um, even though yes. they don't speak French in Toronto, they speak French in Montreal. Um, there's a lot right. more French influence there. Mm -hmm. So that would be my dream job. Um, but I definitely would love to work for any of the Philadelphia sports. Um, I can't, if I were to work for them, I couldn't be biased. So maybe I could settle for like a New England or a Pittsburgh because, you know, it's a sports team, but <laughs> I'll just keep it in my head about my bias. Um, Philadelphia. <laughs> Flyers. Then, yeah, absolutely. Um, and then if I could travel anywhere, ooh, I want to go there. <laughs> I, I would love to go there, but if I, I want to go everywhere. I want to see the okay. entire world. I guess my number one destination would be to see the Northern Lights. Um, it could oh. be any of the Nordic yeah. countries. Um, yeah. I don't want to see them in Canada or in um, Alaska because I feel like that's cheating. So I definitely want to see them <laughs> in any of the Nordic countries and any yeah, of the yeah, yeah. European countries. Um, I also really want to go to Egypt. I really want to see the pyramids. Nice. I just want to go everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't choose one. Yeah. Well, then this is the right field for you then, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Great. Thanks, Carolyn. Uh, Miranda. Um, so 
since we're on the topic, if I had to pick somewhere that I wanted to travel, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I've been thinking somewhere that I could really do like adventurous things, like maybe okay. South America. All right. Yeah. Australia. I don't know. Australia is crazy. I would love to go visit there at some point. Um, and my dream job, I am not 100% sure what I want to do yet, but sure. I see myself working for a global company where mm -hmm. I'm not doing the exact same thing every day. Sure. Um, I would love a job that gave me an international rotation so I don't have to move abroad, but I could mm -hmm. spend some time abroad. Um, okay. Travel. I would love that. And um, as, I mentioned, as I mentioned, I'm really interested in supply chain. So mm -hmm. I am interested in making sure that in the entire process of a product being made and shipped that um, mm -hmm. everything is done in an ethical and sustainable way. Sure. Okay. So that's, that's the first time I've heard anyone mention the phrase um, uh, international rotation. Mm -hmm. Dr. Wen is, is still a question, but is that a thing that, that happens yes. with, with some of these? Yes. Uh, particularly if you work for an MNC, multinational corporation, yeah. uh, they may have job rotation when they send you from one uh, you know, division, one country to another one. Sure. You know, and that can be on a short or long, depends on the, the type of the project that the, mm -hmm. the, the employees handle. But yeah, that is absolutely, it's happening. Uh, you know, uh, even uh, in, inside the country, there's companies who actually send their, their employee to go to many different states, you know, in the program <laughs> before they, you know, and I know that I think automo automotive uh, keys, I, I forgot the name, they have that uh, leadership training program that actually uh, they send their, uh, their, their employees uh, to Texas to, you know, different states to, to work there for a couple of months. And then after the program finished, when they graduate from that program, then they have the experience of different things, different, you know, uh, aspects yeah. of the business and they can run pretty much anything. So yes, uh, MNC, they have this international rotation where mm -hmm. the employee can be deployed, you know, mm -hmm. to different countries. That's awesome. Yeah, great. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Dr. Ryan. Thanks, Miranda. Uh, Lily. Um, so my dream job, honestly, I'm really happy in the position that I'm in right now. So I would say that that was a good answer in case your employer is watching, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I really am happy in the position good. that I am right now. Um, as a project specialist, it's like an entry level project manager. So yeah. I have so much room to grow in my company. So I guess reaching for that project management title um, and working for a big global company, I love that. I mean, sure. once um, things are back to normal and we're back in the office, yeah. uh, I know that my team travels a lot to all these different mm -hmm. meetings across the globe. So I'm really excited and yeah, I'm really happy in my position. And the country that I want to travel to, um, I would pick Italy. I really, really okay. like Italy. Nice. Okay. All right. Italy. So, um, Lily, can you tell us a little bit about what, what, what you do? Like, what, what does an average day look like for you as a project specialist in, in, on the international arena? Yeah. So, um, I'm in the pharmaceutical industry. Okay. Um, so, we, as a project specialist, I help the project managers in my country, in my uh, company. Mm -hmm. And my day to day responsibilities would be um, going to all the different meetings with our clients, mm -hmm. um, helping our clients through their projects and just organizing um, their tasks and like letting them know, hey, this would be the best, you know, way yeah. to get from A to B or how to help this project run smoothly. Okay. So we help our clients with their projects and give them management and advice. Um, mm -hmm. And that's our. That's and where do some of your clients come from? Um, all around the world, really. Um, some of our biggest clients are like Merck and Eli yeah. Lilly, um, just big pharmaceutical companies like that. Awesome. Yeah, that's so cool. Very, very cool. Thank from you. what she describes, she wouldn't believe that, you know, she, uh, you know, the IB pro, uh, uh, IB degree, you know, would land into that kind of job, right? Mm -hmm. that's, what I, that's what I'm saying. You know, this IB degree program opened your horizon in terms of jobs. Sure. You can do a lot of things. It's, it's you know, the knowledge, the skill set that you build throughout, you know, four years would help you land a job. And like I said, you see, even the companies in Pennsylvania, but guess what? The clients come from all over the world. Mm -hmm. that's that's the aspect of the job then of course when the student interview for a job they show they have that cultural awareness you know like they, they know how to deal with people from different backgrounds you know mm -hmm. uh, diversity 
then that would give them an edge in terms of getting a job. So speaking of jobs, Dr. Wen, are you in your dream job right now? Well, perfect. Yes. I mean, no doubt. <laughs> You know, Good. before I Good. became a professor, actually, I was, like I told you, I was in sales and I ran my own business as well okay. uh, for 13 years, you know, but mm-hmm. I think this is my calling. This is really what I, like, I can't even, you know, uh, this is what I really want to do, sure. you know, uh, to help you educate, you know, younger generations and, and, and just mm-hmm. to, to give them back what I, what I have, because I believe when I came to America, I received it excellent mm-hmm. education, you know, and I want to give back. You know, yeah, get back yeah. in a way that I use my what I know, what I experience. Mm-hmm. You know, to share with them, to, to let them. You can ask them too about my my engagement with the student activities yeah. outside the classroom, like the club. You know, the student club that I mm-hmm. that we we work together. You know, we had meeting even COVID. We had meeting every week Monday night. You know, late. You know, because that's what I want to do. I want to help them. It seems like it's a, it's a family atmosphere within this major. Yes, uh, d- definitely. They come here, you know, uh, they will receive uh, great advice, you know, they'll be in yeah. good hands. That's what I could be saying. Our, yeah. our staff here is really, you know, round the clock helping the student, yeah. our faculty working with student one-on-one if they have any concern they need, you know, we, we meet with them. And that's why I think it's a great things that BU can offer to students. Very small class size, yeah. you know, yeah. one-on-one uh, advising that the faculty mm-hmm. like us, like me, advise our student directly. You know, they come to us for academic advice, which is to me awesome. Mm-hmm. All right, the student learn know in and out, you know, what the program requirements look like and schedulings and everything else. So, I, I this is not bragging, but mo- all of my IB students graduated on time or even before time, you know, because of that, the way that we advise our students here. Sure. So, uh, yeah, so I we would pay attention to individual students mm-hmm. as much as we can. You know, to give yeah. them the best we can. Like I said, it's just a kind of like a payback thing for me because I receive mm-hmm. great education in this country as an international mm-hmm. student. So whatever I can, you know, that's why I think this is my dream job. This is really what I want to do. Uh, and I don't mind, you know, going extra mile to help our students. No doubt. Right. Well, good. We all we all appreciate that. And then Dr. Wen, you're pretty well traveled. So what, what I guess my two questions for you is what's your dream place to travel? And what's the best thing you've eaten overseas? Well, to be honest with you, it's hard to pick a ping pong to one place in the world. Because, like Carolyn, I okay. like to travel anywhere, you know. But I don't like to travel like a tourist person, you know. I like to travel and go right. with local yeah. and go to village to understand the cultures and the unique sure. things I experience. Uh, so if I had to pick, uh, really, South America is interesting to me, but also Africa. I've never been to okay. Africa before. Yeah. And and I've heard like they changing so fast so quickly there. Yeah. Uh, we have Dr. John Opara, which he's from Nigeria there. So I learned yep. some story from him, but mm-hmm. no way we have to go there and experience. I would love to go and experience, uh, you know. Well, I know BU has study abroad programs too that run to some of the African countries. Yeah, and I've heard a lot of good things about those experiences. Yes, we do have some program, you know. And actually, as a matter of fact, uh, BU is in, uh, we actually talked about a, an MOU, you know, a relationship with the school in, um, this is one is in South America. Uh, Colombia, yeah. you know, we are discussing mm-hmm. with the MOU with them, and yeah. potentially we're going to have, uh, you know, some future, you know, uh, relationship down in Africa. Uh, sure. I know Dr. Ed Keller, uh, he's done something uh, with the mm-hmm. school down there, but, you know, Dr. Uh, Parr is also uh, has some connection there, so we we sure. look into that, you know, so like I said, there's no one one place I want to go, I want to go everywhere if I can, Yeah. but yeah. Africa seems like my kind of preferred, you know, place right yeah. now. And what's your part of oh, food? Best thing you've eaten overseas. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, many places. I went to many places. I okay. think uh, in addition to Vietnamese food, of course, um, yeah. I like Korean food. Okay, yeah. I've been to South Korea. I've been to Seoul and eat the kimchi and spicy stuff there. I mm-hmm. really like it a lot. Yeah. I will uh, say in, in Bloomsburg, Bloomsburg has a lot of good um a diverse array of, of restaurants. So I know there's a Vietnamese restaurant, there's a Thai restaurant. So like um, the, the food, and I, I'm a foodie, so I was like, you know, like all the stuff on, on the travel channel and, and, but the food at some of the places in Willisburg are, are outstanding. So um, for, you know, Miranda or, or Lily or Carolyn, if you're looking to kind of get a taste of what you might expect when you're going overseas, you know, you have some nice opportunities there in, in, in Willisburg. But I forgot uh, to add though, I forgot to add one thing, I'm sorry. I forgot to add Thai food. 
love Thai food. Oh. Love I used Thai to live food. in Thailand for almost a year. So oh, okay. Yeah, eating local food there. So yeah, Thai food is definitely top yeah. of them. Yeah, I love Thai food. Yeah, yes, certainly. My kids like Thai food too. Perfect. All right, everyone, thank you so much. Uh, I know we ran a little over time. Uh, we had a great conversation tonight. If you have any follow-up questions, please feel free to contact Dr. Wen or myself or, or James. Um, we are happy to help. We work for you throughout the course of this process. So please do not hesitate to reach out to us. Um, this video will be posted on our Facebook page as well as the Ziegler College Business Facebook page. Um, so if you're looking to, to circle back or you wanna rewatch a certain section, please feel free to do so. Um, stay safe. Uh, I know we all got a lot of snow, so everyone be safe and, and enjoy the rest of your night and have a happy holidays. Uh, I would like to thank you to you, uh, Tom and uh, Sean uh, from the admissions uh, group here uh, mm -hmm. with your effort to make it happen. Thank you so much. We would not make it happen without you guys. And I know this take a lot of work behind the scenes to, to make it happen. So again, thank you. Appreciate your hard work. Thank you, James, for you know always be there and help us out if we need it. And like I said to you know, everyone watching this, please check out the International Business Major mm -hmm. Program at BU. Uh, you're gonna, you know, it's gonna be a great program for you, a great choice yes, for yeah. you. So same here, uh, happy holidays, and uh, you know, stay safe and uh, you know, be healthy. You know, stay healthy. <laughs> All right, thank you, everybody. Have a great night.